Good evening. It's Thursday night. It's time for Living Word Christian Church's Lady Bible Study, Godly Women. My name is Patty Knack. Welcome. We're glad you joined us tonight. We're going to have a good time in the Word of God. You know, I don't think you can have a bad time in the Word of God. So we're pretty destined to have a good time hearing what God has to say to us tonight. So let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, I thank you that we are, you have not left us here on earth alone without your precious Holy Spirit abiding within and helping us, comforting us, being our strengthener. Thank you, God. Thank you for all that you are to us. And we ask that you would guide and direct our time together tonight ask that you would speak to each heart what you want to say. I ask that you would direct me where you want this Bible study to go, and I ask that you prompt me with scriptures. You would just put your word in my mouth, that which you want done this time and this this moment in, in our ta- lifetime. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, we receive from you now, and we declare we have ears to hear what your Spirit would say to us, and we will not harden our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome, welcome. We are in now, our, uh, we are January 14th. We uh, have completed our second week here in January. Um, trust your January is going well. We're we're working on letting things go and not having carryover from the night before on things that may have been ruffled or whatever between us and someone else. We have chosen to be like God, that his mercies are new every morning. We also are endeavoring to just tithe our time daily to the Lord, to give him opportunity in our life. And... Um, I am stirred that, you know, when we were praying and about the Holy Spirit being with us, um, I just want to go over this. Just It just came up, and so I'm going to follow. Um, in John 16, verse 7, it's talking about the Comforter. Um, Jesus is saying, however, I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, and advantageous for you that I go away, because if I do not go away, the Comforter, our Counselor, our Helper, our Advocate, Intercessor, Strengthener, Standby, will not come to us, to you, excuse me, Jesus is talking to us, into close fellowship with you. But if I go, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Hallelujah. Um, The beginnings of this year looks like it's going to be a uh, one to ride out. I'm glad we have God. I'm glad we have God. I'm glad that I belong to him. And I'm so very grateful that we have the Holy Ghost as our comforter, as our counselor telling us what to do and what to say and what not to do and what not to say, where to be, where not to be. Our helper, when we're stuck, we don't know how to do something. He's our helper. He's our advocate. He will help us pray. He will lead us in prayer as we pray, yield ourselves in praying in other tongues. He's our intercessor. Yes, he will pray for, through us. He's our advocate. He stands up for us and strengthener. He empowers us with his mighty, mighty strength. And he's our standby. He will enable us to stand. And it is that Jesus wants us, look at that in the Amplified, to come into close fellowship with him. He wants, Jesus, the Father, wants us to be in close fellowship with the Holy Ghost. So we have the, um, we have it wide open for us to have a close fellowship with God. And if we're tithing our days and our time, um, I just, I am excited about that. Um, I'm excited about that. I want to be in close fellowship 
with the Holy Ghost. I want to be in close fellowship with the Lord. Um, this is a time not to have a distant walk <laughs> with the Lord. This is a time to be as close as we possibly can be. Um, I think every any time is that way, but it you know current events surely seem that way. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go to the eternal, ever living, ever powerful word of the living God. We are going through the book of Proverbs, and again, we are just sauntering our way through. Um, I'm going through it in the Passion Translation, and like I've said before, my disclaimer, this is not a thorough study of Proverbs at all. This is just, we're just meandering through, sauntering through, letting the Spirit of God quicken us to different verses and then leading us in other places as He will. So, um, trust you've got your Bible. I didn't ask, did any of you get a Passion Translation, <laughs> a passion translation for Christmas? If you did, let me know. And you know, um, I would really appreciate your feedback if you have any comments or questions, a, a verse or that, or something you want to... Um, feedback is always appreciated and welcomed, so um, there you go. So we're going to pick up, hallelujah, in Proverbs chapter 20, we had left off with verse 12, let's see. Proverbs 20, verse 12. Um, it says, The lovers of God have been given eyes to see. Yes, hallelujah. With spiritual discernment and ears to hear from God. Thank God we've been given ears that we can hear God. We have, isn't, think about that. We have been given ears to hear God. Glory. I'm thrilled about that. Verse 13, if you spend all your time sleeping, you'll grow poor. So wake up, sleepyhead. Don't sleep on the job. And then there will be plenty of food on your table. The buyer says, as he haggles over the price, that's junk. <laughs> it's worthless. Then he goes out and brags, look at the great bargain I got. You may have an abundance of wealth, Piles of gold and jewels, but there's something far greater, of far greater worth. Speaking revelation words of knowledge. Anyone stupid enough to guarantee a loan for a stranger deserves to have his property held as security. What you obtain dishonestly may seem sweet at first. But sooner or later, you'll live to regret it. Moving on to verse 18. If you solicit good advice, then your plans will succeed. So don't ch charge into battle without wisdom, for wars are won by skillful strategy. In the end of recent history, we've uh, pastor has taught about um, David inquiring of the Lord, um, whether he should go into battle. One time it was a yes. And then the next time he had this opportunity to go into battle, he asked the Lord. You know, that's key. Not to think you just got, okay, I asked him once, so that's what I'm going to go with. Um, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 6, acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. So whatever I'm doing, it's really prudent, very wise of us if we acknowledge the Lord and just, you know, Lord, direct my path. What do I need to be doing here? And that's exactly what David did. He inquired the first time and, and the Lord said, go. And he inquired the second time and the Lord said, no. Um, it's just good to make sure we are listening to our marching orders and that we are submitting ourselves to receive marching orders by the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Um, we don't know it all. <laughs> what a revelation, huh? We don't know it all, but our God certainly does. And we are, we are we're needful to lean on Him 
and to do things his way and in his timing. Um, praise God that, you know, we can have ears to hear what his spirit tells us, and we're just smart. We're just a wise woman if we ask God about stuff and don't just rush in um, like a bull on a china shop. Okay, verse 19. A blabbermouth will reveal your secrets. Mm, have you had that happen to you? <laughs> so stay away from people who can't keep their mouth shut. Sila. That would be um, the... Holy Spirit would have that fruit of self-control. And, and maybe maybe we're the one that likes to talk. And maybe we're the one when somebody tells us something, then we tell somebody else. Ooh, <laughs> then we need to yield to that fruit of self-control that's on the inside of us. You know, um, the powerful fruit of God's Spirit in us is, is resident None of us, none of us are without that fruit of the Holy Ghost. Let's look that up. Let's, it's Galatians 6. Let's just take a look at that. Boy, you know, I should write this down. Hmm. So I know where we've been. Oh, I got that wrong. Okay, it's Galatians 5. What was I thinking? Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Let's read that. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes. You know, we talked last time about giving it all up to God and not holding anything to ourselves. Oh my goodness, um, how foolish of us. Um, when we let him have his way in us, he can accomplish a lot of things in us, a lot of things. So we need to um, acknowledge him, give him place, give him preference, and let him develop that fruit of his presence inside of us. It says the work which his presence within us accomplishes. His presence is in within you and within me if we have accepted Jesus as our Savior. We have love. We have joy and gladness. We have peace. We have patience. We have an even temper or forbearance. We have kindness on the inside of us. We have goodness, benevolence, and faithfulness. We have gentleness and meekness, humility, and we have self-control. So we have self-restraint on the inside of us. Isn't that good to know? You know, um, a lot of times we ask God for... Um, help in the new year and then we you know many times we you know people will have new year's resolutions and things we're going to do and we want to do we want to change or whatever and and then you know maybe we get to the mid part of february and that's shot out the window but i found um like just even in my own weight control of my body i've i've really have asked the lord to help me um, in, in getting to the weight that he wants me to be and the self-control. Um, and we can yield to him on the inside of us. It, you know, I, I'm listening, or listening, <laughs> I'm reading um, Kenneth, ha Kenneth E. Hagen's Faith Food Devotional. I'm, I picked that up going through that this year. And he's been talking the first few days hear about the inner man and the outer man. Well, the inner man, that's the real you and the real me, the part of us that knows God, the part of us that's brand new, us, me. I need to take charge of my flesh, my outer me, my, my outer me. That's how I want to say it. 
Um, I need to be in charge of it and not it in charge of me. I need to tell it what it can eat and how much. <laughs> not a lot of fun always, but, you know, um, being a disciple means being disciplined. Ooh, did I say that out loud? Yeah, being a disciple means I'm disciplined. You know, exercise is, is excellent for our bodies, our cardiovascular, everything. It's good for all of us on the inside. And, and um, we're with, with the Spirit of God on the inside of it and the, us and the fruit of His presence within us. He can help us as we rule over our outer man and tell our outer man, you're going to do this and you're not going to do that. Um, It's not something that we can just... I like to ask God for help. And then his spirit on the inside of me helps me. And then I, together, I'm looking to rule my outer man. So my outer man does what my inner man wants it to. Um, Okay. (laughs) But going back to, we have the fruit, the very fruit of God's spirit right on the inside of us. We have his love. So if we say, well, I can't love that person, it's that we don't want to love that person. We certainly have the ability because God has poured out his love into our hearts and we have the fruit of the spirit. We have God's love. So we certainly can. So it's an it's a choice of our soul here, our will, our choices, what we're going to do. So we can love everybody. Um, he's put joy within us and gladness. You know, not everything is um, hilarity and laughter all the time. But there can be an under there is, can be an undercurrent, an undertone of, of joy. It just you're you're just it's just you're not gonna get down because you have a buoy of God's presence on the inside. Just we have a supernatural joy. We have the presence of God. What is it? In the presence of God is fullness of joy. Ooh. So if we've been having some sad days, um, we need to adjust our focus. And, you know, there's a lot going on on the outside. But we need to focus on the, on the Lord and His Spirit on the inside and His presence and His joy. Because in it's like... That's Psalm 16. Let's look that up really quick here as it's coming. Um, I say that. Sometimes it's like a Bible quiz when we come to Bible study. Because <laughs> I, I don't always know what verses the Holy Ghost is going to bring up. So here we are. Um, it's Psalm 16. And it says, and it's verse 11. And it says, you will show me, this is the New King James. You will show me the path of life. You know, that's a good thing to pray in the morning. Wow. Lord, show me the path of life today. How you want me to live today. What you, what you want to do in and through me today. Um, show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. You know, back to Dr. Barkley and back even farther to Kenneth E. Hagan when they, they both have encouraged us to tithe an hour or two of our day to the Lord. In his presence is fullness of joy. If we're spending time with the Lord, joy is one of those Outcomes. It's one of those fruit that we will enjoy. In your presence is fullness of joy. Mm, so if my joy level is low, I may need to fellowship a little more with the Lord and worship Him and get in His presence. I mean, just shut out everything else and draw near to Him and let His presence just overflow you with His joy. 
It says, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So Psalm 1611, for you will show me the path of life. You'll show me how I'm supposed to live today. You show me what I need to do today. Show me the way to go today. Kind of like acknowledge him in all of your ways and he'll direct you. And in your presence is fullness of joy. We want to, I mean, of course his presence is in us all the time, but sometimes we're not very attentive. Can I be real (laughs) honest? Sometimes we're so busy with everything out here, but we need to attend to him on the inside. I'm talking to myself. In your presence, Lord Jesus, is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. So putting our attention on his presence and letting his presence just work in us, that fullness of joy. And it says, goes on to say, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Praise God. It's good to know. We don't have to muster up the joy in ourselves. It's his presence. It's his presence. And I'm going to go back here. It says the fruit of of the Holy Spirit, the work which His presence, we can't get it any place else. His presence within accomplishes. His presence in, inside of us accomplishes love. His presence inside of us accomplishes joy and gladness in the midst of yuck. His presence within us accomplishes peace. We can have turmoil all the way around us but having his peace, mm, we can have that. We can have that. Hallelujah. In his presence, there is patience. We can be an even-tempered person, an even-tempered woman. Um, You know, we can be up one day and down the next and easy to be with one day and hard to be with the next. That um, That isn't a fun place to be. He can help us to have an even temper, just to be steady, just to be steady and even temper, being patient. His presence within us causes kindness, not being snarky and abrupt and snooty and whatever, whatever, but kindness. His presence within accomplishes kindness within me, and I can just share that with others. His presence within me accomplishes goodness. Goodness. His presence within me accomplishes faithfulness. I can be a diligent person. A diligent person. His presence within me accomplishes gentleness. Not being harsh and hard, but being gentle. His presence within me accomplishes self-control, self-restraint. Hallelujah. We can live an empowered, spirit-filled life, spirit-led life. Oh, glory to God. We have a lot of opportunities for victory in it, well, in every situation. And every situation isn't great. Okay, I get that. But God can make a way. And he'll help us if we yield to his spirit on the inside. Give him time. Spend some time in his presence. Spending time in his presence. I, I have found if I don't shut my phone off, I get distracted. I get interrupted. And it's just... It, but just spending time with him. Spending time with him, his presence within. Hallelujah. Well, we got a lot out of, (laughs) or I did anyway, a couple of verses here. We we were reading uh, the 19th verse, um, chapter 20. Um, Oh, I know how we got there. It says, so stay away from people who can't keep their mouths shut. And then I said, it came up that maybe some, maybe we're the one that can't keep our mouth shut. Maybe somebody tells us something and we go. And then we got on to self-control and we got on to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Let's be one of those of God's people that yields to his fruit. 
which his presence is accomplishing on the inside of us, that we can be, we can have self-control and we can control our mouth, our words, our actions, and our emotions. Um, that's, that's very doable <laughs> with the Spirit of God on the inside. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, verse 20, if you despise your father or mother, your life will flicker out like a lamp, extinguished into the deepest darkness. Um, boy, I'm brought again to Ephesians 6. I'm so glad. I want the Holy Spirit a part of our Bible studies. I mean, a lot of these are things I haven't been didn't come to mind before, but as I'm sharing with you and we've asked for his help, I'm so glad he, he's uh, participating and helping us. Let me find, we were in verse 20. And it's, I'm, I'm looking at Ephesians chapter 6. And let's look at verse 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. I liked years ago when Pastor was um, speaking, he said, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Not that they are always right, but it's a right thing. It's right before God for children to obey their parents. Verse 2 says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise. Um, it says that it may go, may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. That, this is a long life verse. If you were honorable, if, you know, we want to be honorable to our fathers and mothers. <clears throat> it is the first commandment with the promise that it may be well with us and we would live long on the earth. Um, honoring our parents because God tells us to. Not because we think they deserve it, not because we think they're always right, but because God says to. Because we're honoring God and he says to do that. And that's, that's, where, <laughs> that's where the victory comes. That's where we want to be. Let's do what God says to do. All right. Verse 21, if an inheritance is gained too early in life, it will not be blessed in the end. I'm guessing because if it was a young person, they would not know how to um, what's the word? Be a good steward over the money and could get this way and that way. And, and then not have anything left. Verse 22, don't ever say I'm going to get even with them. Mm. <laughs> okay, that would not go. That would go contrary. That would fly in the face of my mercies are new every morning. <laughs> so we don't want to be the one that says I'm going to get even with them because we would have dropped it the night before the sun went down, right? <laughs> right. And if you are wondering, what are you talking about? You look back on the January 7th. Um, Bible study. We, we talked about it there. Now you're, this says, don't ever say I'm going to get even with them if it's the last thing I do. Mm, it might be the last thing I do. Wrap God's grace or favor around your heart and he will be the one to vindicate you. We talked about this oh, months ago. Two things belong to the Lord. Two. And we're not to touch it. Number one is the tithe. That's God's. And if I go buy a new pair of shoes with God's money, <laughs> no. And the second thing is, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. We hunker down and get close to God and draw near to him. Let him be our defense. So those two things, ladies, we don't touch. We don't touch the tithe and we don't touch vengeance. Both of those belong to the Lord. So let's look at that latter part of that verse. It says, wrap God's grace or favor around your heart. If somebody's done you wrong, go to God. 
Take it to God. Pour your heart out to him, the scripture says in Psalms. Wrap God's grace around your heart, and he will be the one to vindicate you. Let him take care of you. Let him be God to you. Let him handle it. Trust him. Let it go. Let it go. Just refuse to hang on to it. In Jesus' name. Verse 23, the Lord hates double standards. And I guess I would say I agree with him. (laughs) That's hypocrisy at its worst. It is the Lord who directs your life. For each step you take is ordained by God. To bring you closer to your destiny. We acknowledge him. We acknowledge him in all of our ways. Um, I have here Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified. This is one of my favorites. Oh, I have so many favorites, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. But this is, you know, if you're, if you're at a crossroads in your life or you've got something coming up, um, I am sure thankful for Ephesians 2.10. I'm going to read it in the Amplified and let let the words of our God just minister and speak to you. For we are God's own handiwork. His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Hallelujah. I can almost hear you shouting over that verse. Isn't that a wonderful verse? We're God's handiwork, it says. We're his workmanship. We're recreated in Christ Jesus. We've been born anew that we may do what we want to do. No, this is when we come down to to total surrender. God, my life belongs to you. It's not mine anymore. It's yours. I I live to please you. I live to love you, as the song says, to do those good works which God has predestined, which God has planned beforehand for us. He's got a plan for you. Glory to God. You're important to him. Isn't that just an amazing thought? How many people there are, you know, in the Cooley region, and then we think in the state of Wisconsin, and then we talk about the Midwest, and then we talk about the United States, and then, but God cares about you. He's got a plan for you. He has a path for you. What a personal God. What a personal Savior we have. Hmm. He has a, that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time. That's why we want to acknowledge him in all of our ways and he'll direct us. And then we're going to, like that Psalm 16, how, how to live. Hmm. Oh, Psalm 16 real quick. Let's put this together. You know, if we were all together, I would just ask one of you, could you read that, what I just read earlier, Psalm 16? <laughs> Psalm 16 says, you will show me the path of life. Hallelujah. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy you know he will show us the path of life and it it says here that we would do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us taking the paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them Living, hallelujah, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready 
for you and me to live. God has a good plan for you and for me to live. He's prearranged it. He's prepared it ahead of time. Even down to the place where we live. God has a designated place for us. Hallelujah. We are His handiwork. His workmanship. Doesn't it? It's just the magnitude and the greatness and the majesty of our God sometimes can just be so overwhelming. It's so... uh, It just makes my heart so big on how much God has invested and how his plans for us. He's got plans for us. He's got plans for us to speak to people. He's got plans for us to do things that would propagate his kingdom and and, and bring out his word to people. He's got plans. I sure want to follow those and walk in that prepared path. Ah, I want to, I want to, you know, I'm just grateful that he's got a prepared path for us. He prepared it ahead of time that we should walk in it, living it, living the good life. He wants your life and my life to be good. Glory to God. Which he prearranged. You know, we just came out of the holidays. And we had Thanksgiving, and then we had Christmas Eve and Christmas and New Year's and New Year's Day. I remember when I was growing up, my mom would have a menu. She would have the meals planned beforehand. (laughs) I hadn't thought of that. She had it prearranged, and she made it ready for us. I mean, that's kind of simplistic, but think about it. God is saying the same thing about your and my life. Um, He's prepared ahead of time prepared ahead of time. I think back to when I met my husband um, at Bible camp, which I hate camping. <laughs> I, I just, ugh. And he's not a camper either. Um, we both took the path that was prepared ahead of time for us, that we should walk in it. It was prearranged and made ready. And that's, you know, Wow, we have a big, big God. It's just, it behooves me just to look for what he's doing all the time in our life and what he wants to do in our life. Glory to God. Well, I didn't have any of that in my notes. I think it was Ephesians 20, excuse me, (laughs) We're in Proverbs. In Proverbs 20, 20, it talks about despising. If you despise your father and mother, your life will flicker out like a lamp. You can't expect to have good things happen if you're disrespectful to your parents. Um, Extinguished in the deepest darkness. Um, we we want to honor the, our, our mom and our dads. That's a promise. We do it because God wants us to. Oh, we got down here. I got... I backed up too many verses. Oh, let's just go ahead and read them. Don't ever say I'm going to get even with him. That's the last thing I do. We talked about vengeance isn't ours. The tithe is not ours. Both of those belong to the Most High. We're told to wrap God's grace, God's favor around our heart, and he will be the one to vindicate you and me. Verse 23, the Lord hates double standards. That's hypocrisy at its worst. And then it was verse 24. It is the Lord who directs your life. Glory to God. For each step you take is ordained by God. Talks about that 2.10 um, in Ephesians, in the Amplified. Prepared, prearranged path for each step you take is ordained by God to bring you closer to your destiny. So much of your life then remains a mystery. Yeah, 
We don't have to know. A lot of times I'm glad I haven't known what was coming around the pond. And I have, I do have another verse written here. This is one of my favorites. This is a good one that if you're like, oh, I'm at a crossroads, what do I do? Do I take this job? Do I not take this job? Do I go this place? Do I not go this place? Psalm 32. Okay. Verse 8, he is telling us in this psalm, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. You know, I, it just comes up again. When I'm totally surrendered to God, this is not a hard deal for God to get across to me. If I'm like this with God and I'm determined I'm hanging on to this and you nobody's praying it from me, it's pretty, we don't, I mean, God can get through to us. We're we're not we're not being too smart here. <laughs> I'm not I'm, I'm making it hard on myself. If I'm just open and say, God, have your way in my life. You know, He knows what's best for us. He knows what's uh, what's the best place uh, we're to be. He knows what's best for us. We think we we might think we know, but we don't know. We don't know. He says. He says, I will instruct you. Glory to God. He'll, he'll talk to us and teach you in the way you should go. I love this next part. I will guide you with my eye. Huh. He's watching out for us. He's going to guide us with his eye on us. Hallelujah. I am... Uh, I'm very excited about that. I'm so glad that God is has a personal interest in each one of us. It's not like we're there's so many people that he can't keep track of us. <laughs> God is not like that. He knows how many hairs on your head, how many hairs on my head, and how many hairs on your your in your family on their heads. God cares about us and it says he will instruct you and me and teach you and me in the way that you and I should go. He will guide you and me with his eye. Hallelujah. Then, I didn't even think about it, but look at this. Verse 9. If we're being stubborn, if we got our will kind of... It says, Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with a bit and bridle, else you won't, they will not come near you. So we don't have to be like, I love horses. I mean, I think they're the mo one of the most beautiful animals. I just really enjoy them. Um, we don't want to be like one of those that have to have a bit on the come. You know, I was always one of those that I wanted a horse that would come, you know, not run, a, run the other direction. You'd come to ride and the horse see you and take off the back 40 and you'd have to walk through the field with the uh, with the reins the the bit in the reins to to find them so you can put it on them and then lead them back and saddle them i wanted always wanted a horse that you know you come to the fence and they'd see you and they'd come running let's be like that with god that we just have nothing we're holding back Lord, you just do with me what you want to do. Have your way in me. Wherever you want me to be, that's where I want to be. I don't want to be where I, I don't want to be, <laughs> where you don't want me to be. I want to be where your plan is fulfilled here on earth in my life. Have your way in me, oh God. Have your way on me. Well, my goodness, we, we did all of maybe <laughs> four or five, maybe six verses here, but I'm not going to apologize for the different verses that God brought up, I've been encouraged greatly. We have the fruit of the Spirit on the inside of us, and we honor Him, and then back, go back over these. But God has a prepared path for you, and let's, let, let's make it easy for Him to lead us and not be stubborn and willful. But be open and submissive and yielded to the Spirit of God. You just take me where you want me to be. Glory to God. Well, we better close. It's time. Father, thank you for this time that we've had in your word together. 
ask that you'd seal it in our hearts. Speak to each one of us. We love you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, until next week, this is Patty Knack with uh, Living Word Christian Church's Ladies Bible Study, Godly Women, saying have a great week. <laughs> We're going to continue to just tithe our time to God and let our inner ruler outer in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next week. Bye for now.